I should have brought my equipment on stage, too. That's great. <laughs> because Haskell's going to film this, you know. Really? <laughs> he doesn't stop. Yeah, yeah, I see. <laughs> Haskell. Yes. When we were, <laughs> when we were doing uh, the radio show a few hours ago, you said you weren't quite sure what made you a rebel citizen. Have you given some thought to that since then? <laughs> well, it's kind of strange. Um, this it. But then, as you looked at this film, kind of strange things as um, can be expected from me. You know, <laughs> I just said that um, I, I had had a really a big breakfast, bigger, bigger than than I wanted, and the sound um, recordist. <laughs> and but I but I ate it anyway because I heard um, I heard my mother's voice and saying um, I know this is sound pretty. Remember the starving Armenians. <laughs> <laughs> and so I I've, I've been conditioned all my life to um, to think about what that is and what she, my mother, expects of me. And that's what I think motivates um, not just the pictures that Pam picked out that I did, but motivates me as I sit here in front of a lot of incredibly good storytellers, filmmakers. In fact, if, if the bad guys were going to bomb a theater, <laughs> yeah, <they're> <laughs> you're all here. <laughs> I, I spotted Susan Micellis, who was in Nicaragua with us, and, and all that. <laughs> yeah. and, 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 and all these people, because we are privileged, you out there are privileged, um, to have a bigger mouth, <laughs> a bigger mouth, you know, because it's, it's the marvel of technology and a lot of the good things uh, that we have in our country is you can tell stories and, and you have an obligation to kind of tell the kind of stories that will not lead to, I'm making a speech again, but not lead to making, to more killing, to more destroying of the, of the atmosphere, to realizing that we have a chance, and that's what the positive aspect is, and that's what's in this room, and that's why um, I'm happy that, that, that Pam made this film, not because it's about me, but it's, it's what, I, what I think I want, we all can believe in. Yeah, 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 yeah. I noticed before that there was a round of applause for the editors when you made your... <laughs> but I was wondering if that was editors applauding uh, <laughs> or if it was the filmmakers applauding the editors. Or documentary directors who yeah, really who value and understand yeah, the, that's right. what the editors do in documentary yeah. filmmaking. Yeah, yeah, that was uh, yeah, the alternative. Um, so <laughs> probably a little of both, right? Probably. Let's hope so, yeah. Um, Pam, you know, to make this movie for you, you said you wanted to give it as a gift uh, uh, when you were introducing it um, to future generations. And so I wanted you to just kind of elaborate on that a little bit more because what Haskell's saying just now is that he's happy for the movie, not because it's about him, but because it embodies what he believes in. It's what you believe in as well. So I was just wondering, I wanted to let you describe that in your own words. Well, it was a gradual process because we were really just recording a conversation that we were going to have. And you know, all of you filmmakers out there, you know when you were starting out and you got together with your friends and you said, oh, let's go shoot this demonstration or let's go uh, film this play or let's go film this event and then it turns into a movie. Well, that was pretty much the way that Rebel Citizen wa was made too because um, I was asked, Haskell asked me to represent him um, at Cinema du Royal, the, the festival in Paris, because they were doing a retrospective of his documentary work. 
And um, I said, yes. And I said, but I'm going to have to look at all the films again, and I want to come out to Los Angeles and talk to you over several days about the films. And that really was the genesis for Rebel Citizen. But Kent, when I looked at all the films again, and then when I saw them all again in Paris, um, the power of the documentary work just hit me in the face. And I said, you know, presenting the body of work this way, whether it's in that festival or in Rebel Citizen, would be so important. Because that's one of the things we do, right? We compress time and energy and um, emphasis into um, an hour, a two hour documentary. Yeah, right there. So I'll repeat that well, question and just summarize. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, I'm not word for word. I just need I to told summarize you that. The there are people out here yeah. <laughs> that are, are ready and are knowledgeable and, and, and have their ideas about the world and they're organized and so on, okay? Um, and um, <laughs> um, so I can't answer your question. I don't know if you heard it out there. I'm, I'm going to repeat it, it, was, Haskell it was for knowledgeable. Yeah, it's about it the good, medium between documentary and Hollywood filmmaking. And in Hollywood yeah. filmmaking, they make shit up, and in documentary, yeah. they yeah. don't. The and Hollywood the, filmmaking, the, I was just the, the, lucky. I was lucky because I was around a lot of people that just didn't want to make films that made money. They wanted to make films that expressed something. And I was just lucky being associated with them. And, and I mean, you saw in the heat of the night, Norman Jewison, Sidney Boitier and I, uh, we were active in the civil rights movement. We wanted to make a film. When you see the film now, you say, what the hell was so radical about that? It was radical. But because uh, the system, you know, we don't have, we didn't have, we don't have a, a closed system, you know? We have enough slack now and we have to work with it. So I, that's the only answer I can give to you. Um, yes, uh, Saul Landau took me all kinds, on all kinds of adventures in a lot of places that I wouldn't be. Um, um, I just don't know. I, I, I did speak at his memorial, they asked me to, and, and I can't really speak to this audience about uh, my best friend. Um, I, um, I don't know, when Pam was here and talking, and Pam made this film, um, I do remember uh, that we both worked in Latin America where there was a big secret going on to most American people. And, and that was that we were, um, we were training people in Fort Bragg, soldiers for Latin America, we were paying money to, um, uh, to mercenaries. Uh, we were training them, they're giving them weapons um, to kill people in Central America. Uh, with our money and so forth, and, and a part of it was called the Contras. And, and, and Pam was part of work that got in with the Contras, got some of the imitation. We say, of course, this is the weapons we use. Yes, we're going in there. We don't care about the Catholic priests who are working with the workers there. We don't care about this. We're, okay. So then, but then this was, this was not known in America at all, that this, this warfare was going on. So we had our cameras and so forth. We had the information, but it didn't break the media barrier. And, um, and when it did, by a, a fluke, what was it, I guess? I think it was the downing of Hausenfuss, right? The pilot that was, that was working for the CIA. And, and then, then, then when it broke for the public, um, um, Reagan uh, said that, well, the countries were the moral equivalent of our founding fathers. And then nobody, Nobody challenged them. No one said anything. You know? Just as we say it about, about um, we were lied to about going into Iraq, you know? 
And the, the president who was out there saying that stuff and all the people with him, uh, they're writing books and they're on TV shows. And um, there's no consequences to breaking big laws. It depends which laws and who's making them. Yeah, and that's our job. That's our job to ask the questions. We're going to find those WMDs one day, though. <laughs> yeah, I think that they're, yeah. Jim. Yeah. So this is a very interesting question about, you know, being in the information age and the age of big data, as Jim puts it. What kind of challenge does that pose to documentary film? What kind of challenge does that pose to documentary filmmaking? which is quite different from the challenges of an earlier era. I don't know, what do you think, Pam? The challenge is to get a film like Pam made into a film festival. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, a, <laughs> it's a winning challenge, you know? I'd let it come up and let, let a lot of people in this audience say it's, it's, it's a bunch of crap, or it's unloaded, or it's, it's, it's overloaded, or it's not, which it is, you know? Um, that's good. The conversation is good, but it has to be about something. It can't just be about whether some politician screwed somebody that's not his wife or, or, or uh, all this scandalized stuff or whether someone had an abortion or didn't, you know? Uh, it has to be about something. That's what a live democracy has to have. I think it's a double-edged sword. I think that um, with the explosion of documentary genres, we have many more possibilities and many more ways of um, uh, diffusing, of, of, of um, what's it in English, of uh, disseminating and distributing all of, the co all of the films that we're making now. And we really have to take advantage of that. But the other edge of the sword is um, how much is known about us and um, and, and what we're gonna be able to do. I was really struck when I saw Laura Poitras' film, Citizen Four, about how, even for someone like me, um, how Edward Snowden had been so mediated that I didn't really know him or what he was about until I saw that film, because the filter was taken away. And so I worry very much about that. So to comment about the shot, from the weather underground, from the well, underground rather, that, that, was that Pam includes I in the could, film. I was obliged not to show any faces, even certain hair was not people. I, I, I was not, but there was a mirror there, so that's the only thing I had to look at. What you see is the mirror. You see D'Antonio and me. It's a very boring thing. And no, I, but other, other people would have, um, like, shot people with blurred faces yeah, or right. blacked out their black. faces. Yeah, that's right. But it, this was much better because you're not only showing the weather underground, but you're showing the process of making the film. Right. Again, you're tearing down the proscenium. And it, it was also a really creative way. <laughs> a creative way of um, making that frame incredibly dynamic. Yeah. <laughs> he doesn't believe you, but it's true. Yeah, yeah and the vector. Yeah. Right, so the question is about the lack of credit for you on Days of Heaven, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, and the conversation. Three different cases. In the, in, in, in the case of Days of Heaven, you were taking over from Nestor Almandros to complete mm. the work, because he had to split. Yeah. In the case of the conversation, you came to a you know, yeah. parting of the ways with Coppola, right? And in the case of One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, that's something different no, that um, you should explain. Uh, but they, they, it's their release with different levels of credit. I mean, um, it's just business and so forth, you know? <laughs> you know, uh, here's the thing, is that I don't want, I would hope this discussion is not about me personally. Because the reason I wanted to come here is I wanted to throw the challenge out to you people of talent, people of ideas, and I mean not just ideas that I think I have, but your own ideas. And not only, not only that, because you have what you used to some call artistic talent, communicative abilities, no matter what, you know? And um, we used to just call that being good citizens, you know? 
And, and now, of course, they use the word activist. You know, what's an activist? Activist is when all people in democracy be engaged. Uh, I think you should, if you haven't read some of the messages that the Pope is saying, if you talk about it, it has to be a way, a different way of looking at us and what we're in the world and what we do. And I think that um, he has said some things that resonate very heavily with, uh, with all of us who, who want to be good citizens, you know, and, and yes, want to be rebel citizens, but not rebels that kill people or denounce people or use racism or religion to divide us. No, that's not the kind of rebel, you know, no. So the question, Haskell, is about actually mentoring the next generation that you're encouraging with your remarks. It's a question to you and Pam. Um, and and uh, whether there were any, whether there was any mentoring in the process of making this film. Is this to me or Pam? It's, to both it's of you. It's to both of us. I'll, I'll, I'll take the first Please. and then. Uh, well, yeah, I think there's two ways to mentor. One is um, not, o not only in the making of the film and including people in, um, the n from the next generation, but also making films that encourage people from the next generation to, to say that what they do is important and what they, what, and what they have to say can have impact. Um, on this particular film, uh, Daniela Quiros. Daniela, where are you? She was um, the main editor, and uh, she did a fantastic job. And um, at Skylight, we kind of have the partners, and then we have the next gen. And um, they're so impressive, and they're coming up really strong. And I think that they really breathed fresh air into um, our company. I think all of us, too, at Skylight anyway, e each of us have our own way of um, mentoring as many people as we possibly can. It's an important and exciting time in our community, and there are many more documentary filmmakers coming in and emerging. Good. Uh, I, I believe if we're, if we're storytellers or we're communicators, we have to learn the tools that we have. We have to know something about drama. We have to know, we have to be, artists and true artists which are communicating so and they're just plain practical things that you have to have you can't just have all these big deal ideas and say okay how come how come no one's paying attention it could be not that what you're saying is right or wrong but you don't have to say it interestingly you know um about the young people um uh, i had i i sent a copy of what, uh, just uh, uh, something that was said to our Congress. It said, if politics must truly be at the service of the human person, it follows that it cannot be a slave to the economy and finance. Politics is instead an expression of our compelling need to live as one in order to build as one greatest community go for good that of community which sacrifices particular interests in order to share in justice and peace, its, its goods, its interests, its social life. I do not under, underestimate the difficulty that this motive involves, but I encourage you in this effort. I sent this to my grandson, uh, Jonathan, who is uh, an actor. He studied to be an actor. He does commercials. He's done theater. In fact, the last commercial he did f was for Volkswagen. <laughs> 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 but, uh, but anyway, he wrote a beautiful letter back expressing how, what that meant to him personally. So as far as young people, that's one of the con one of the c contacts I had. You know, we are um, just just to further that idea. We are going to be showing the bus, the film in its entirety, next week on October fourteenth at Union Docks. And I don't know whether you know, Union Docks is a great place of young people in Williamsburg. 
dedicated to documentary filmmaking. The film hasn't been projected or shown publicly in 30 years. And so um, you should all come down because I think that's also a way. Let's, let's look to our past to try to understand our present. What does that film and the civil rights movement have to say with the rise of Black Lives Matter today? Um, let's discuss it, let's just debate it. It's the start of a new series called BK at 24 FPS, Human Rights Through a Different Lens. And we're kicking off the whole series with the bus. Pam, I really want to thank you for making this movie and for coming in Haskell. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. <laughs>